Hello friends, how are you doing today? Welcome to Storytime. This is our under eight-year-old group. I hope that this finds you well and that you are um, finding some time to do some fun stuff. And I hope that you are finding time to do some reading of your own at home um, with your family. So I have a couple of good books. I always say I have good books, right? because I know that I choose them because they're good. <laughs> I have uh, two books that I'm going to be reading to you. Um, one story, again, from our More Farmyard Tales. So I'm going to start off with this one today. Um, so this is written by Heather Amory and illustrated by Stephen Cartwright. And um, remember that on these pages, every single page has a little hidden duck that you can try to find and see if you can see where um, he is hidden. So we've read a couple of these stories already from Apple Tree Farm and a little bit about um, the family that lives there. So I'm going to read the next story in this one. It's called Scarecrow's Secret. So this is the next one that we're going to read. Scarecrow's Secret. Do you know what a scarecrow is? Um, Scarecrows are put in gardens or in fields to help scare away the crows so that they don't come eat the grain that's been um, planted or pick off of the, the things that are beginning to grow the way that the, the um, clothes on the scarecrow blow in the wind uh, are help to scare the birds and keep them away. So that's what a scarecrow is before we even start. This is Apple Tree Farm. This is Mrs. Boot, the farmer. She has two children called Poppy and Sam and a dog called Rusty. Mrs. Mr. Boot is working in the barn. What are you doing, Dad? asks Sam. I'm tying lots of straw on these poles, says Mr. Boot. Okay, so there's a lot of work to do on a farm. And as we look at these pages, do you see the little duck hiding on each of the pages? Where is the little duck on our first page? Look, right there. Do you see the little duck on the next page hiding? Right there, behind the barn door. All right, so Mr. Boot is busy doing something. What is it? You'll soon see, says Dad. Go and get my old coat from the shed, please. Bring my old hat, too. It's going to be a scarecrow. Poppy and Sam come back with a coat and hat. Then they help Mr. Boot put them on the scarecrow. So look at that. They're building a scarecrow. Kind of looks like a person, right? It has a face and then arms and a body. But it's all on a pole that's going to be stuck in the ground. Do you see our little hidden duck on each of these pages? What about over here on, on this page over here? Do you see it? Look, it's looking right around the corner with the other animals there. Look at that one that on this page? Do you see it on this one? Do you find it? Yeah, it's right there. Right by the toolbox. He's just like a nice old man. I've got some old gloves for him, says Sam. Let's call him Mr. Straw, says Poppy. He's finished now. Help me carry him, please, Poppy, says Mr. Boot. You bring the spade, Sam. A spade is a type of shovel. Do you find the duck on each of those pages? I see him. Do you see him? And look at the scarecrow now that he's done. And they're going to be taking him out and putting him in the field. Doesn't look very scary, does he? I hope you found the duck on each of those pages. They all go to the cornfield. Mr. Boot digs a hole in the field. Then he pushes the pole in so that Mr. Straw stands up. He 
he does look real. I'm sure Mr. Straw will scare off all the birds, says Sam, especially the crows, says Poppy. So look at him. They put him right there in the middle of the field. Do you see the duck on each of the pages? Have you found our little duck hiding? Mr. Straw is doing a good job. Every day, Mr. Boot, Poppy, and Sam look at Mr. Straw. There are no birds in the cornfield. There's Farmer Dre's scarecrow. He's no good at all, says Sam. The birds are eating all the corn and standing on the scarecrow. So that's the uh, another farmer's scarecrow. Look, it doesn't look quite as real. It's just a pail, maybe a cloth, a bag of some sort. It doesn't seem to be scaring away the crows as much as Mr. Straw is. All right, so look closely. Do you see the little duck hiding on each of these pages? Oh, I hope you found him. Why is Mr. Straw so good? Sometimes he looks as if he's moving, says Poppy. His coat goes up and down. It's very odd. Let's go and look. Let's creep up very quietly, says Sam. And they tiptoe across the cornfield to look at Mr. Straw. Hmm. So Mr. Straw is doing a really good job, and they are even surprised that Mr. Straw is doing a good job. Have you found our little hidden duck on each of those pages? Hmm. I hope that you see him. There's something inside his coat. It's moving about, says Poppy, and it's making a funny noise. What is it, says Sam. It's our cat and our kittens. Carefully, they open the coat. There is Whiskers, the cat, and two baby kittens hiding in the straw. <laughs> Look at that. So that's what was making Mr. Straw move and look like he was real because Whiskers, the cat, was in there with her new baby kittens. Have you found our little duck hiding on each of those pages? Good. I bet you're getting good at finding that duck. So that scarecrow's secret. Whiskers is helping Mr. Straw to frighten off the birds, says Poppy. Clever, Mr. Straw, says Sam. So let's look at this page. Do you see our duck on that page? Good, and look at the cute kittens. They were helping Mr. Straw. That was his scarecrow secret, was to have whiskers and her baby kittens inside. That's kind of funny. Mama cats have their kittens kind of sometimes wherever they want to, and sometimes it seems like an unlikely place. It would seem very unlikely to have kittens inside of a scarecrow, but it did help him be a good scarecrow. I like that, and I hope you were able to find the duck on each one of those pages. All right, um, the next story I'm going to read to you is called Monkey Mo Goes to Sea. Monkey Mo Goes to Sea. And this book is written by Diane Good. Let's find out about Monkey Mo and what happens to him when he goes to sea. One morning, a letter came for Birdie and Mo. Look at that. Do you think this story is taking place in our current time that we live in around now? Doesn't look like it, does it? Look at their clothes. Looks like it could be old tiny, like it happened a while ago. And boarded the blue star. So they got their letter. Oops, I think I may have skipped a page there. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> that didn't make sense to me. It said, Dear Birdie and Mo, meet me for lunch aboard the Blue Star. Love, Grandfather. P.S. 
Tell Mo to act like a gentleman. Okay, see that makes more sense when you don't skip pages in the story. <laughs> so they went straight to Pier 17. Now look at all the people. We definitely know this isn't something that's happening in our current time, in the present. This is something that happened in the past. Look at how all the people are dressed. Okay, so he tells Mo to act like a gentleman. So they went straight to Pier 17 and boarded the Blue Star. That's the name of the ship that they're on. And look at all the people waving goodbye as they get ready to take off. There were so many gentlemen on the ship. Look at all those gentlemen. They're dressed like gentlemen. Very nice. They're speaking like gentlemen, talking to one another. That's what Grandfather wants Monkey Mo to do, is to be like a gentleman. Mo was sure he could act like one of them. Look what he's doing. How is he acting like that gentleman? He's standing there with his, with his legs crossed like that gentleman is standing there. That, what, what he thinks is making him a gentleman. So they went up the grand staircase. Look at that big, beautiful staircase. Is Mo being a gentleman on that one? Probably not. And out onto the deck. Look at all the people. Where Mo decided, uh-oh, what do you think Mo is going to do? Mo decided to, what I wonder. I don't want any pages to stick together this time. These are sticky pages. Ramo decided he would act just like the gentleman with the yellow scarf. Monkey see, monkey do. So look, he's tipping his hat just like the gentleman did. That's what gentlemen did in those times, especially when they had hats on. When the lady would walk by, they would take off their hat and tip their hat and greet the woman or anybody in general as they walked by. So Mo followed the gentleman everywhere. Oh look, that gentleman is up walking on the railing. Not something you would think a gentleman would do, but he's going to do it and Mo is following him. And he did everything the gentleman did. Mo felt like a real gentleman. Oh, look, he's in the gym working out because that's what the gentleman did in his nice gentleman suit and hat. He was working out in the gym. So Mo did that too. He even looked like a real gentleman. Oh, look, Birdie dressed him up like a real gentleman. Look, he has on the suit like the other gentleman did. When he met Grandfather at lunch, Mo shook his hand, just like a gentleman. Hmm, very good, Mo. Grandfather seems impressed. He helped a lady into her chair. Oh, yikes. He was trying to help her, but he pulled it out too much and she fell. You see your little panties or bloomers. Uh -huh. And he tried to make polite conversation just like a gentleman. So what's wrong with that? He's just making polite conversation. Well, he's hanging from the chandelier. That's crazy. That's not very gentleman-like. He helped pass the fruit. Well, that seems very gentlemanlike to give everybody some fruit. They seem a little shocked by it. And danced with two ladies, just like a gentleman. Hmm. Although they don't seem like they're quite um, wanting to dance with him. And the gentlemen there don't seem like they're prepared to have Mo dance with him. Look at the look on this lady's face. She's quite in shock. And this man does not look very happy at all. That was the man he was trying to be like, right? Mo thought 
He was a real gentleman now. But something was not right. Everyone was angry at Mo. Ooh, well, he's climbing on people's heads. That's not at all gentlemanlike. That would make everybody angry for him to be climbing on their heads as they're sitting there. So people were not happy with all the things he was doing. Especially Grandfather. Yikes. Not a good look from Grandfather. Mo. Grandfather told him, if you cannot act like a gentleman, please leave the room. Aw, poor Mo. He thought he was acting like a gentleman. He thought that's what he was doing. The grandfather told him he needed to leave. So Mo went out on the deck. Look, there's the man with the yellow scarf walking on the rail, and Mo is watching him. Then suddenly he saw his gentleman go overboard. Yikes, going overboard means he fell off of the ship and he's falling into the water. So that gentleman that Mo was watching and he thought he was trying to be like fell off of the boat. Well, he was walking on the railing. Probably not a very smart thing to do. And into the water. And without thinking twice, Mo jumped overboard too. Monkey see, monkey do. But look, he has a life preserver that he's wearing when he jumps in to the water. He rescued the lucky gentleman. Whew. Look at that. His suit's all wrinkled. Lost his socks and his shoes. Still got his yellow scarf, though. Who gulped and said, mm, What a gentleman this monkey is. He has saved my life. So that was a very gentlemanly thing to do. He didn't even think about it. He just did it. And Grandfather was very proud. Oh, and look at his gentleman hat that he gets to wear now. Very good. So Monkey was trying very hard to be like the other gentleman on the ship. Just wasn't very good at it. He's a monkey. Not good. To, not easy to be a gentleman when you're a monkey, maybe. Mm -hmm. But he did a good thing because he saved the gentleman who he was trying to be like. When he fell into the water, didn't even think about it. He just jumped in to try to save him. So that was good. He was just being nice. That's the best part about being a gentleman for Monkey Mo was just being nice. I hope you enjoyed the stories that I read for you today. And I cannot wait to see you back here again next time when I have another couple of great books because I always have great books to read to you. <laughs> um, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Get out today. Do something fun. Enjoy your day. Have a wonderful one. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.